Hello everyone, my name is Dominique Amara and thank you so much for checking out this video on how to study the Bible. Uh, this is actually the very first video on my brand new YouTube channel uh, where I help women to grow spiritually and live for God. Now, I'm super excited to be embarking on this new journey in 2018, so I'm just hopeful that this video will prove to be helpful to you as you learn how to study the Bible and how to mature spiritually as a woman of God. So, let's get started. All right. So I have gone through multiple methods on studying the Bible. This has been something that I have gone through uh, since I was, I, know, I was like 14. <laughs> I'm 27 now. So 14 all the way to 27. It took me a while to find something that works. But this method actually has been working the best for me. Um, and I don't know if it's because I'm older now and I can just comprehend a little better, but this just works um, best for me and it's actually something that I discovered this year um, while I was going through a Bible study at my church. So I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Now uh, this Bible study method is just four steps. Um, it's not like 500,000 steps and you got to read and take notes and try to figure out, okay, now what do I do? What do I do? That's not how it works. This is pretty simple. I just broke it up into four steps for you guys. So what are those steps? Step one, wake up early. Now, why would you want to wake up early? I'm sure that's what some of you guys are asking. I understand that some people are not morning people. I am. I've been a morning person since the day I was born. But uh, waking up early has its benefits. Um, I've noticed that when you wake up early, you tend to be a little bit more focused. I know some people may have to drink a couple of cups of coffee and that's perfectly fine, but um, you tend to overall be a little bit more focused because you're not bogged down by the day's drama and all the stuff that can happen throughout the day. You're fresh. So waking up early can really be um, the best thing. And also you don't, Typically, you don't deal with a ton of distraction as you would towards the end of the day. Like everybody's calling you, everybody's texting, everybody's doing all this stuff. But um, when you wake up early, most people usually tend to be asleep. So it's very helpful to just <laughs> wake up early and have that, um, that time with God. Um, and we also see in the Bible in Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 35, where uh, Jesus rose early in the morning to pray. And this was just, I mean, like I said, it's not something you have to do, but we see in scripture where Jesus himself rose early. So it's a good thing and a, and a, a good habit to get into. You may ask how early you have to get up. That's totally up to you. Personally, I get up um, about an hour and 30 minutes um, before I usually would wake up. And I just use that time to spend time with God and to study his word. So what is step two? Step two is prayer and worship. Look, y'all, you have to be, you have to be serious about your Bible study, but you also have to pray to God for insight. Um, you know, just reading the Bible without praying is just pretty much an intellectual pursuit. You're just trying to learn something, but you have to, to pray in order for God to speak to you about what you're, you're reading. Um, so prayer is, is essential. It doesn't have to be a long 30, 40 minute prayer. You can just say, and usually this is what I say. I just say, uh, Lord, open up my mind and my heart to your word. Amen. That's it. You don't have to get super deep. Um, so just start off with prayer. And when I say worship, um, usually I turn on music when I wake up, as soon as I wake up, because if I sit in the bed for too long, I might go back to sleep. So waking up, um, turning on that worship music and uh, praying is definitely, definitely a must. So definitely do that. Now, what is step three? Step three is when you actually begin your study time with God. Um, now, this is the method that I mentioned earlier. This is the one that's been working for me. I typically find a book of, a, of the Bible that, I'm, that I really want to study in depth, 
and I read that book of the Bible multiple times. Um, I do this with no commentaries, no sermons, no study Bible notes. I just read the scripture itself multiple times. I try to get my own understanding of what I'm reading. Um, it's in, it's a very, very important to fight for your own interpretation of what you're reading. I mean, it's very easy to, to just go to a commentary or look up uh, your favorite preacher and see what they say about it, but you have to, to fight for your own interpretation. And um, it can just, it takes time. It can be difficult to do that because that's not typically how we do things. Usually we have like a study Bible, you can just open it up and if you're confused about a verse, just read what the study notes say. But it's, it's a good idea to kind of just let your mind sit and ponder what it is that you're reading. So I highly recommend that you do that. Read through it as many times as you want. I understand sometimes it's hard to read through certain books of the Bible like Leviticus, <laughs> for instance, or Numbers. It can be difficult. And I know some people don't want to read that more than twice, and you don't have to, but I do recommend reading it more than once. Usually, well, right now for me, I'm studying the book of Romans, and I've read through it about six or seven times, and I still want to read through it more because Romans can be a little difficult to comprehend at times. So you have to just read it multiple times until it kind of seeps into you and, and you start to understand what it is that you're reading. So definitely do that and fight for your own interpretation. That's very important. Um, then you move on to your uh, highlighting and taking notes. You can actually use a journaling Bible. I've done that before. Use a journaling Bible to just highlight and take notes out on the sides and the margins and just whatever comes to mind, you may find yourself asking questions like, what does this mean? Why did Jesus say this here? So just take those notes, highlight, think about it, underline important passages, do whatever it is that you need to do to comprehend what you're reading. And then you can use, once you've done that and got your questions all figured out, you can use that to let scripture interpret scripture. Now, by that, I mean you can use cross-references to view a similar scripture to whatever it is that you're reading. There is a really great resource called the Treasury of Scriptures, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. Sometimes I say scriptural knowledge, but the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. It's a book that you can purchase. You can purchase it online. You can, I think that you can actually see some of that stuff online for free. I'm not too sure, but I do have the Treasure, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, uh, on my iPad. So let me just show you guys here. All right, I already had it up for you. I didn't want to have to go through all that. But yeah, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, I have this in my Bible study software. And it's really cool to just be able to just find a passage that I'm studying and look at all the cross-references, all those scriptures that relate to what it is that I'm reading. It's super helpful and, and can help get you some insight into what you're reading so that you're not like totally confused. So definitely, I recommend getting that purchase in that book. They do have the new treasury of scripture knowledge, but, um, I don't have that. I don't have that edition. I think the new edition adds like a hundred, a hundred thousand uh, more cross references, which is just astonishing. So definitely check out the treasury of scripture knowledge for cross references. That's, that's just one of those things you have to have when you're studying your Bible. So once I've done all that, and I fought for my own interpretation and I've let scripture interpret scripture, that's when I move into my commentaries. I highly recommend that you use commentaries as well because yes, while we have to fight for our own interpretation, it's really great to have uh, insight and wisdom that someone else may have, have gotten from the text, especially these guys and, and women who have been studying the Bible for decades. So we have to, to seek that wisdom as well and just see what they've come up with. So we may agree, we may disagree, but definitely check out uh, some, other, some other people who have been studying much longer than you have or I have. Definitely check that out. Um, you know, so sermons, notes, commentaries, 
all of that can be accessed at this point in the method. So that's all of step three. Finally, step four is meditation and prayer. At this point, this is where you meditate on what you've read and figure out how you can apply what you've read. You don't just read the Bible just for knowledge. Like I said, it will become an intellectual pursuit, but you have to apply what you've read. You know, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you on his word, through his word, and and figure out how you can apply what it is that you're reading and what you have read. That application step is absolutely necessary. And once you've done that and just meditated on it and let God convict you on some things, because he will certainly do that, <laughs> allow him to convict you on some things and then just close out in prayer. And usually at this point is where I kind of get a little more in depth in my prayer. I, you know, repent, ask for forgiveness, and then I move on to uh, praying for other people. I do have a little prayer list that I go through each morning and I pray for everyone on my prayer list, every situation on my prayer list, and then ask for God's help and strength throughout the day in that prayer. And that's it. So that's essentially the four-step method. It's not, it's not extremely difficult. You don't have to have a checklist of what, okay, what do I need to do now? What do I need to do now? It's, it's pretty straightforward and it's been very helpful to me. And, and it is kind of a longer study method instead of doing like a devotional here and there, or, you know, just read and study Bible notes, which like I said, the, those notes are excellent and they do have a place within this method, but it's usually towards the end of step three, once you've done your own study and, and your own interpretation. So uh, you guys just definitely use utilize this method. Hopefully it proves to be helpful to you as it has been helpful to me. As I said, I've been looking for the perfect method since I was like 14, uh, but of course I wasn't consistent in that. I don't want you to think I've been trying for years and never found anything. It, I wasn't consistent at all, but more recently I've gotten a little more consistent with it. So Hopefully you guys uh, can, can utilize this method and it'll prove to be helpful to you. So like I said, this method requires time. It requires patience. Don't beat yourself up. If you don't wake up early, you find whatever time works for you ultimately. But I, this is just my recommendation for this method. So if you have only five minutes to give to God, that's fine. Give him five minutes. He'll honor that better than no minutes that's for sure so <laughs> give him whatever time that you have and utilize this method so that you may grow and and mature spiritually so thank you guys for checking out this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it and if you want more resources please go to my um check out my website at dominiqueamara.com and you can I do have an article posted there with about, I think it's about nine or 10 resources. Uh, I don't know. I may add some more to it, but about nine or 10 resources that you can use for your personal Bible study. Once again, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Please subscribe for more videos uh, to be automatically sent to your email, your inbox. I will be posting videos every two weeks. So definitely check that out. Hopefully my next video will be uh, digital Bible study methods that I would love to share with you guys because I'm I'm a tech person so I love having my digital resources and I want to share those with you guys so thanks again and I hope you guys have a wonderful day